Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson one five, which is all about imaginary numbers. If you remember a couple lessons ago, we were talking about real numbers, and now we're going to talk about imaginary numbers. So why do we need imaginary numbers? Because the square root of negative one has no real roots, no real solutions. So to figure out how we can still solve problems with negative square roots, we um, have this imaginary number so that we can kind of solve that problem that was, what do we do with the square root of a negative number? So an imaginary unit is where um, we have that square root of negative one. So that means that I squared is equal to negative one. And it also means that I is the square root of negative one. So we use I to represent the square root of negative one and show that it's an imaginary solution. So an imaginary number is any number that can be written in the form a i, so a number times i, where a is any real number. So here's how we use it. When we have the square root of a negative number, we can split it apart into the square root of negative 1 times the number, and that means that I have i, because the square root of negative 1 is i, and then we still have the square root of five. So it removes the negative from under the root, and then we can simplify the root like normal. So for this one, we can split this apart into negative one times 36. Well, we know that the square root of negative one is i, and the square root of 36 is six. So when we have a simplified, number where we don't need a root anymore in our answer, we put the number first. When there's still a root, it comes after the i. All right, so let's look at one more. So we already have a three out in front. Then I'm gonna split this root apart into negative one times 25 times two. So when I simplify that, the square root of 25 is five times three is 15. The square root of negative one is i and I still have a square root of two. So that's how I would write 15 i root two when I simplify it all. Okay, let's look at some operations. So we're gonna look at some examples of what this looks like with imaginaries and then kind of see what it's similar to that we already know. So when we're adding and subtracting, it's essentially combining like terms. So if I have an imaginary plus an imaginary, or an imaginary minus imaginary, I just subtract the numbers and keep it imaginary. If we're multiplying with imaginary numbers, it's a little bit different. So when we multiply, we are multiplying the coefficients, and then i times i is i squared. If you remember from up above though, i squared is negative one. So I can change that i squared to a negative one, it makes that answer negative six. So sometimes when we multiply two imaginary numbers, we actually get a real answer. Now, in this example, we are multiplying a real number times an imaginary. We can multiply that um, coefficient. So think of it as like three times four X, let's say. I can multiply the numbers and keep the variable. In this case, it's not a variable, it's an imaginary, but it's the same idea. All right, let's look at dividing two imaginary numbers now. So we can divide anything by itself. So even an imaginary divided by imaginary is just one. So this would reduce to three fourths because just like over here, when we divide X by itself, it's just one and we don't have to write it anymore. And then lastly, we can divide an imaginary and a real number. So you can um, basically pull out the real parts just like we would if we have 2x over 3, I can make that 2 thirds and keep the x next to it. Same idea with imaginaries. So let's practice those a little bit. So to start with here, we have the square root of negative 16. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and the negative makes an imaginary. And then we're going to subtract the square root of 49 is 7, and the negative makes an imaginary. Now I have like terms essentially here, two imaginaries. So I would subtract to get negative three i. For e, we are adding like terms here because they're both square roots of two. 
So I'm going to add i plus 5i and get 6i and keep the root 2. E is multiplying here. So let's simplify. Square root of negative 4, that's 2i. Square root of negative 25 is 5i. So when we combine those, I get 10i squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1. So that would be negative 10 as my final answer. All right, and then lastly with dividing here, we can do the numbers divided. So 21 divided by negative 7 is negative 3. And then we put the i on the end. All right, when it comes to imaginary numbers, they are closed operations under addition and subtraction, meaning that when I add and subtract imaginaries, I get imaginary answers, but they are not closed under multiplication and division, right? We talked about when we multiply two imaginaries, we sometimes get a real one out. Okay, let's look at a couple more things around I or imaginaries. So. As we kind of move forward, we'll have different powers of i. So we've talked about how i to the first power is just i, and i squared is negative 1. If we continue on that pattern, I would essentially have um, different versions of i squared and i being combined. So i to the third I can break apart into i squared times i, and that would be negative 1 times i. That's right, i squared is negative 1. So that would give me negative i. i to the fourth is i squared times i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1, and i squared is negative 1. That gives me a positive 1 answer. That pattern that's happened here, where the answer was i, negative 1, then negative i, then positive 1, repeats. So if you look at this pattern over here, when the exponent is a multiple of 4, the result will always be 1. So when I look at 8, that's a multiple of 4. The answer is going to be 1. It's because I can break it apart into negative i times i, and that's going to be negative i squared, which is 1 again. All right, so let's look at some more. When we have i to the fourth, remember that is 1. Then we have a leftover i, so that would just be i again. When we have i to the 6th, that's i to the 5th. We just figured out that's i times i, which is i squared, which we've talked about as negative 1. i to the 7th is i to the 6th, which is negative 1 times i. That is negative i. Let's write it on this one. Negative i. There we go. So you can see that pattern repeats over and over and over again. All right. So let's practice that a little bit with simplifying, right? So i to the 15th. So I'm looking at how many multiples of 4 can I take out? So I'm going to go i to the 12th, because that's a multiple of 4, with a leftover of i to the 3rd. So i to the 12th, because it's a multiple of 4, remember that is always 1, and then times i to the 3rd, and we know i to the 3rd is negative i. Right, negative i to the 16th. So that means that we have a negative 1, and then we're doing i to the 16th. Well, i to the 16th is divisible by 4, so that means we just have i to the 4th with nothing left over. And i to the 4th is positive 1, so that gives me an answer of negative 1. And then the last thing we need to make sure we understand is that we don't want imaginaries in the denominator. So we need to simplify that. To simplify it, we're going to look at that exponent again. So leave the 3 and the 4 alone. i to the 7th, that is going to be i to the 4th with a remainder of 3. So that's going to be 1 times i to the 3rd. And when I simplify that, 1 times i to the 3rd is negative i. So to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply by i over i, just like we did with radicals. So that's going to give me 3i over negative 4i squared. 
And negative 4i squared, well, we know that i squared is negative 1, so that makes that just positive 4 on the bottom. So now I've gotten rid of that imaginary in the denominator. All right, so, so we are going to do some practice problems here. So for number 1 here, square root of negative, I see right off the bat, so I'm going to put an i, and then square root of 81 is 9. This one, we've got negative 4, the square root of negative 36, that would be 6i. So when I combine those, I get negative 24. Now we're multiplying two imaginaries, so I'm going to have 15i squared, and we know that i squared is negative 1, so we would have negative 15 there. Number 4, we've got two radicals going on. So if I combine those, I get negative 49. So the negative is i and the square root of 49 is 7. So I can simplify that to 7i. Number 5, 3 and 6 are not perfect roots. So I'm going to take out the imaginary part and then combine when I can. So i times i is i squared. And 6 times 3 is 18. So when I break that apart, I have i squared. And then I can break it apart into 9 times 2. So remember, i squared is negative. Square root of 9 is 3. And then I'm left with the square root of 2. All right, number 6. Now we're adding. So in order to add, let's simplify a little bit here. This would be i root 3. And then if I break this apart, it's 9 times 3. So that would leave me with i root 3 plus 3i root 3. Now I have like terms that I can combine. So that would give me 4i root 3. Right, number seven, again, we're trying to add, so let's simplify a little bit here. I'm going to break this apart into nine times two. And I'm going to break this apart into i times the root of four times two, because eight is four times two. So that would give me three i root two and two i root two. Now they're like terms because they have the same radical. So I would get five i root two. Number eight, we're subtracting. So let's simplify this out here. This negative is just going to come out as i. Can't simplify two at all, though. Let's simplify this and do i. We've got 25 times two as a perfect square. So I've got 3i root 2 minus 5i root 2, because the square root of 25 is 5. And now they're like terms that I can combine. So we've got negative 2i root 2. Number nine, negative i squared. So that would be negative i times negative i. And remember that negative times a negative is positive, and i is i squared. We know that i squared is negative one. All right, our last three here. Let's simplify this out a little bit here. So I've got i squared when I distribute that squared, and then I've got the square root of two times the square root of two. And when I do that, i squared is negative 1, and the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2. So when I simplify that, I get negative 2. All right, in this next one, the only problem with this one is that the i is in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply it by this i over i. So that gives me 8i over 3i squared, which is really just negative. And lastly, we've got this square root of a negative in the bottom. So 4 on top, square root of 4 is 2, and square root of negative is i. Now I've got to multiply it by i over i to get rid of that. So in the numerator, I have 4i, and in the denominator, I have 2i squared, which is negative 2. All right, that is everything with simplifying radicals and combining it with imaginary numbers. We'll see you next time.